We're trying to make Franklin, you know, a better place to live. Now at five, fixing up old abandoned properties and improving their downtown. Could it work in communities across central Indiana? The ambitious program bringing people and tax dollars to the community. You can feel it. It's still cool now, but look to the west. There's our warm up. When we'll reach the 80s. 17 years since one of the biggest attacks on American soil. Tonight, Central Indiana remembers those who lost their lives on September 11th, 2001, and the heroes who died while saving others. From the station working for you, this is Breaking News from RTV6. Breaking news right now at 5 o'clock. Metro Police believe road rage was the motive behind a deadly shooting this morning. A woman was driven to a fire station on Sherman Drive just before noon. She was taken to the hospital where she later died. Investigators found a crime scene on East 38th Street. Police say everyone involved in the incident has been detained. We are learning more on this. We'll bring you updates as we learn more about this investigation. Good evening and thank you for being here. I'm Amanda Starantino. And I'm Mark Mullins. Well, her son was found left on the floor of a hot car tonight. His mother now officially faces criminal charges for the boy's death. And the Delaware County Prosecutor's Office confirms Brittany Nicole Weebrink faces charges of neglect of a dependent resulting in death and obstruction of justice. Both charges are considered felonies. Weebrink's son was found dead in a car outside an apartment complex in Daleville, according to a police report. Weebrink told officers she took a nap after drinking, and when she woke up, she could not find her son. She is being held in the Delaware County Jail without bond, her first court appearance is scheduled for September 24th. For 35 years, an organization in Franklin has been taking old deteriorating buildings downtown and then renovating them. Well, new at 5 RTV 6's Stephanie Wade shows us how this has helped to bring the Johnson County City to life and the bigger plans that could benefit even more people. This is just one of the old abandoned properties in downtown Franklin that Franklin Heritage is working to restore. Their goal is to change the look and feel of downtown and help improve the property values in this area. Like others they've worked on, the exterior of this home along Front Street fell into a state of disrepair. In order to prevent homes from becoming abandoned and breeding crime, this nonprofit was formed. Center Grove High School students helped out with today's restoration as a part of their service day. And while this project preserves historical buildings, the executive director says it really provides a larger economic development. You're, you're bringing back, um, you know, some of these houses that haven't been on the tax rolls in years. And, and now suddenly they'll be helping the assessed value of town. So every property that we do, it brings the, the values up. Well, that helps every homeowner around them. Coming up at 6, I'll tell you how you can help, how you can get involved, and about an event that they're holding this weekend to showcase the work that they've done for this community the past 35 years. Reporting in Franklin, Stephanie Wade, RTV6. Thank you, Steph. Moving to weather, here is a sight you have not seen in a while. It's the sun. It's shining around central Indiana and the temperatures are warming up a bit. We're joined by Kevin Gregory in the tracking center. It was a beautiful day. Did you just have the windows open? I agree. Yeah, the humidity is low. It was great. I always joke when you haven't seen it for a while that unidentified shining object is, is the sun. All right, this I was hiding this from a man on the desk. That's my rating ah, for the day. there we go. I give today an 8 out of 10 because you need to save room for improvement, right? And I think we'll do that. We'll start to warm things up just a little bit. Not much to complain about, that's for sure. We're starting our dry stretch, day two of that. The warming trend still about 24 to 36 hours away to where you really feel a difference. And a rain chance Sunday night, Florence may have an impact on the state. We'll We'll wait and see. It's still kind of a long shot, but it's certainly in play. 74, that's our current temperature. There's your wind out of the east at 9. The fair weather cumulus clouds you see over your head at about 1,500 feet. Those will fade away tonight. And notice this, sunset right at 8 o'clock. Temperatures are coolest in southeast Indiana, warmer along the western side of the state, anywhere along the Wabash River, which is slowly starting to recede. Temperature tonight, from 77 now in Lafayette down to 58, we'll see some patchy fog. 75, the magic number tomorrow. And just to give you a preview, we do make it to the 80 degree mark on Thursday. We'll talk about even warmer temperatures shortly.
Never forget. That's the one request of every American after the September 11th, 2001 attacks on the United States. On this day, 17 years ago, hijackers flew two commercial airliners into the World Trade Center in New York. Both towers eventually collapsed. Hijackers also flew a jet into the Pentagon. And then brave passengers helped stop hijackers on yet another plane, which ended up crashing in a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. In all, nearly 3,000 people were killed. Here in Indianapolis right now, a man recognizing the victims of 9-11 in his own very public way. And depending on your drive, you may have already seen him. RTV6's Alyssa Donovan shares his story and his message to Hoosiers tonight. Every year on September 11th, you can find James Clark right here holding that American flag. He says he does it to remind people passing by to remember those who lost their lives in the September 11th terror attacks. It's a sign of support. For 17 years on September 11th, James Clark has stood on this bridge over 465 holding his American flag. Just to see this this flag whipping in the wind, it reminds us of a thousand things about how great our nation is. Clark stays out here for 12 hours, waving and holding the 50 pound flag. A challenge he says is nothing compared to what those men and women faced the day the Twin Towers fell. To honor those 2,977 people who in those final moments were exhibiting love and displaying tenderness and strength for, you know, how terrifying that must have been and total strangers were looking out for each other. He does it for the victims, the first responders, and the families that still grieve. And while he grins as they honk, the underlying feel of this day is and will always be solemn. It's a somber day, not once to celebration, but remembrance for real live American heroes. Alyssa Donovan, RTV6.